Hey guys, welcome back. So this morning I got out the case tractor and I hitched it up to the hay rake. And as soon as the field dries, all the dew that's out there on the grass this morning, as soon as that uh, evaporates, we're gonna go out there and we're gonna rake some windrows. So, um, so this time we're trying to make some improvements. You know, we're trying to do things a little bit differently. So we have a draw bar in the three point arms of the tractor. And uh, that's what we have our hay rake hitched up to. And I think that's gonna help us out a little bit, give us a little bit more flexibility as we rake the field. So this here is the draw bar in the three point arms. And you can see there's 11 holes in this. So this gives us quite a bit of flexibility on how to hitch this up. So we can actually hitch it up far to the left side so that we, the hay rake hangs out farther to the side if we want to. And then we'll be able to actually lift and lower the hay rake from the tractor using the three point arms. So now that I can raise and lower the hay rake from the seat of the tractor, I won't have to get off and, you know, manually adjust the height of the teeth with the uh, hand crank here on the hay rake. So I'll give you a closer look at the hitch on this tractor. This is called an eagle hitch. It's kind of like a quick hitch uh, on the tractor. There is no, there's no sway here. These are fixed and you have to have a perfect 26 inches between them to be able to hook up to this tractor. If it's wider than 26 inches, it's not gonna work on this tractor. That's one thing I don't like because the sickle bar mower is wider, so I can't run it on the case. Now being fixed and these don't move, you actually don't need to have pins here in the end. This is captive and it's not going anywhere. So when I started, I lowered the hay rake with the three point arms and the left and right side weren't even. Like 
one side was two inches or so higher than the other side. It was way off. I'm like, what's, what's the deal here? Normally, last time I did this, I knew it was perfectly level to the ground. And it's like, well, the only thing different is I didn't crank it down. So I normally turn it 10 turns downward. So I went ahead, turned it 10 turns, and then it was. It was perfectly level to the ground. So um, I don't know, something's a little quirky there. Um, but actually, that worked out better that way because that was the normal height I ran it at. So when I went to low, raise and lower the three-point hitch, um, I knew the right height was the same height as the hitch on the tractor. So I could just lower the three-point arms until they were the exact height as the, tra as the tractor hitch. And I knew I was raking at the, the proper height. I, I didn't have to see the teeth of the rake to know what height it was. And once you're into the hay anyway, you can't see the teeth. So it worked out really good just being able to raise and lower. I'd just be able to look right behind me and lower it down even with the tractor hitch and I knew I was good. It, actually, I was pretty happy with the way it all worked out. Now, one thing about it was is it doesn't raise up too high. It only raises up maybe the, the actual teeth. The, the teeth on the hay rake only maybe raise up maybe six inches, which is enough to keep you from raking the hay that's flat on the ground, but it won't keep you from messing one of these windrows up. So if you kind of drive over one of these wind windrows, you're gonna end up knocking it and moving it. So it's not like a perfect way to be able to move around the hay field, but I did think it came in handy being able to raise and lower it at certain points in time. So considering that the alfalfa was way shorter than last time and then there wasn't much grass that grew in here during the hot, dry summer, um, plus with the fact that the sickle bar didn't cut it very well I ended up making double windrows on the whole thing and the outer row is actually a triple windrow on the outer row and it's still actually smaller than most of these doubles so um, that did make it a little bit easier I will say for maneuvering because it gets a little weird when you get to the center of this field it turns into a triangle and it's really tight turns and it's hard to maneuver. So having the double windrows in that wider space did help, um, you know, maneuver the tractor around and be able to make windrows in that small triangle in the middle. So I think the alfalfa and everything looks really good. Um, let me grab some. I got, there is a couple, there is some spots here where it's pretty thick, you know, and um, I may have to spread a couple of these bigger clumps out just to lay them down. But here is the alfalfa. And I don't know if you can see, you got the leaves are still on there. They're they've got some good color going and it sounds nice and uh, dry. It's drying down pretty good. So yeah, I think it looks like a lot better uh, stuff. It looks pretty, pretty good stuff right now. So uh, hopefully I'm gonna let this dry another day and uh, we're gonna bail it tomorrow. So we should have good weather. Should have one more day of good weather. I know a lot of people a lot of people are going to say that you know the double windrows is going to be bad on the hay baler um, it's just all about the speed you know as long as i don't take any of this in uh, too quickly i should be fine with the hay baler and in all honesty the double windrows are about the size of the single windrows last time that's how much less hay and alfalfa that we, you know we have here but um yeah there is some big spots here for sure where i need to kind of spread it out a little bit but uh i think uh I think it turned out pretty good. So um, really just still disappointed on how shaggy, you can really see it now that it's raked, um, how shaggy the hay field is with the sickle bar mower. I mean, it just had a lot of places it wasn't cutting. So I'll definitely have to go back through that and try to tweak everything a little bit more. Um, the wear plates that were on there originally are pretty worn out. So um, may have to go back and uh, just put all new ones on there to match the new guards and uh, replace some of the uh, some more of the cutters that are on the sickle probably and then hopefully after that I can get this sickle bar mower running the way I want it to that's probably been the most pain in the butt so far as the sickle bar mower so even though this cutting of hay is way less than the first one and the sickle bar mower didn't cut very well uh, what we have here in the windrows I'm really happy with this looks like really good stuff and uh, I'll be happy to get this all bailed up. So tomorrow, plan on let this dry one more day. And then tomorrow, I'm going to come out here with the hay baler and uh, see if I can get this all bailed. Like I said, I won't be surprised if we end up having about half the hay we did last time. But uh, I'll take what I can get. And it's all a learning experience in the end. 
And uh, hopefully, you know, once I get all this equipment finally lined out, maybe next year, I cross our fingers, maybe next year um, everything will go a lot smoother and uh, we'll kind of have a system down by then. But uh, anyway, I think that's it, guys. So thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.